The way we think about corporate entrepreneurship does really three pillars, strategy, enablement, and practice. Strategy involves having the C-level executives make a decision to invest in innovation, and that is typically inspired by some sort of business challenge or business opportunity. And the output of that is a decision for a multi-year capital allocation plan to invest in some sort of an enablement um, you know, a set of enablement tools and programs such as incubators and accelerators to help the company become more entrepreneurial. Enablement re uh, refers to the actual tools and uh, programs that is typically run by an innovation group or innovation lab. And these can include incubators, accelerators. Um, a lot of people do idea crowdsourcing um, to draw ideas all over the world from employees and sometimes um, outside uh, parties as well. Um, and that's also uh, where a lot of uh, external connectivity, such as university partnerships and startup partnerships, can live. The practice uh, refers to employees inside the company who become inspired to build a new venture from the ground up within the company. And what they need to learn is a set of entrepreneurial skills so that they know how to build the new ventures as well as really, really good organizational skills so that they can navigate their stakeholders and build a broad coalition of support. The corporate entrepreneurs oftentimes come from a functional discipline. Uh, for example, they might have been an engineer, they might have been a marketer, they might have been a supply chain expert. So typically, they may not have had the experience of embracing the entire venture like a business owner. So what a lot of companies do is they put them through some sort of training. Um, design thinking is a framework that is widely taught in a lot of organizations, including Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, Massachusetts, including Fidelity. Um, so that's a pretty, uh, you know, uh, a pretty popular framework. Uh, there are other frameworks that are taught. Lean Startup um, can be taught. I myself have actually taught Discipline Entrepreneurship Framework at an International Monetary Fund. I've built a lot of cross-functional teams in my time, from one or two people to 50 people and everywhere in between. And I really think that at the end of the day, whether or not you're building this team in a startup or in a corporation, uh, if it's going to be a team that's building a new venture, there are a couple of things to think about. First of all, it's all about hiring for best talent and by that, I don't mean the best talent with the best PhD from the best school, but the best talent in terms of uh, the person being really, really aligned with what you're trying to build and the problem that you're trying to solve. Because you can teach technical skills, but you cannot teach passion. There's just no way to do it. The second is communication and collaboration across functional silos. And that is especially important from my past in a lot of robotics companies where our teams span mechanical, electrical, robotics and control software and software quality assurance. If we ran each thing as a silo, nothing would happen. It just won't work because the robot has to be all of the above. So finding a way to break down silos and having really, really open channels of communication is really, really key. Lastly, it's all about relationships, and relationships are built one person at a time, one interaction at a time. There's no such thing as wholesale relationship building when you build up a team, even if you have 50 people. You have to get to know your team, and you have to invest the time in understanding how they think about um, the company's problems, how they think about their work, and only then can you build the trust and confidence that will help everybody succeed and pull in the same direction.